The year was 1892, and Catalina Island was in foreclosure. Its owner, George Chateau, had envisioned a resort town on the island, but had built few tourist amenities apart from the three-story Hotel Metropole. When the island finally slipped from Chateau's hands, its new owners purchased it for just $280,000. Today, sun-soaked Catalina Island, a rugged mountain range rising from the sea some 20 miles off the coast of Los Angeles, seems like a natural setting for resort town. But at the time, its future as a tourist destination was in no way assured. It took a sustained campaign of new construction and scenic beautification, spearheaded by the island's new owners, the Banning family, to transform Catalina and the town of Avalon into a tourist paradise. Avalon during the early part of the 20th century was really a place in change, uh, uh, and a lot of change. The Banning brothers who had purchased the island had founded the Catalina Island Company and started to develop Catalina as a tourist attraction. The Banning brothers, Joseph, William, and Hancock, capitalized on Catalina's natural charms, encouraging sport fishing and big game hunting, and sponsoring stagecoach tours of the island. But nature alone was not enough. Among the other changes the Bannings brought, liquor at the previously dry Hotel Metropole, a vast tent cabin city, a golf course. And between 1904 and 1906, they built a monument to modern industrial technology, an incline railway, its station just steps away from the wharf in Avalon. Though inspired by the recently opened Angel's Flight in downtown Los Angeles, Catalina's Island Mountain Railway, as it was called, was unique among the region's funiculars. The cars were on two different sides of a ridge. They were to the right of me here, uh, counterbalanced. One went down to Pebbly Beach, while the other climbed up from the amphitheater to the uh, peak, and vice versa, and then they reversed. On the funicular's west side, passengers rose above Avalon's 4,000-seat Greek theater, a popular venue for outdoor concerts. At the top, on Buena Vista Point, they could transfer to the railway's other car and descend the east slope towards Lover's Cove. There, glass-bottom boats as early as the 1890s had transformed the cove's rich kelp forests into a major tourist attraction. Today, Lover's Cove is home to a marine preserve. Uh, it has a great abundance of wildlife. It's one of the most beautiful and pristine places on Catalina. Though it was an attraction in its own right, the railway also solved a practical problem. How to navigate around an imposing mountain ridge that separated the marine gardens of Lover's Cove from the tourist hub of Avalon. There was no road at the base of the island, and that was the easiest access was up and over the ridge. For some riders, sweeping views from Buena Vista Point justified the round-trip fare of 25 cents. On clear days, views extended to the Santa Ana Mountains and other ranges on the mainland. Some brought lunches to the top or paused for refreshments at the powerhouse, built in the style of a Swiss chalet. They supposedly sold drinks, not sure what, but uh, there was a small park up there. It was called Mount Buena Vista Park. For the Banning brothers, the Incline Railway built on the family's legacy as transportation pioneers. Their father, Phineas Banning, had developed the San Pedro Harbor and built LA's first railroad. Later, his sons opened the first steamship line to Catalina. The railway also helped the Bannings transform Avalon into a favorite summertime resort among Southern Californians. It was never the island's top attraction, but the funicular registered as a moderate business success, generating $5,000 in annual revenue over its first six years. But after a fire burnt much of Avalon to the ground in 1915, the revenue dried up, forcing its closure in 1918. It briefly reopened for a summer convention before workers removed it from the hillside in 1923. But they didn't take everything. Inspired by historical photographs, preservationist and private collector Brian Marcroft came to Catalina in 2006 to track down remnants of the railway. High above Avalon on Buena Vista Point, he found the concrete foundation for the old cable house. This is what was referred to as the tea house, but it was the cable house that dro drove the uh, incline railway. This must have held the uh, drum or whatever drove, held the cable. It looks like this is probably where the electric motor was that powered it. And you can see on both ends here where the uh, track was bolted to the building. You got four there, four in each corner. Though most of the railway's metal parts were sold for scrap, Marcroft also discovered two steel wheel sets from the old rail cars, lying among the weeds above Lover's Cove. I have no idea why these ended up here and, and not scrapped light with the rest of the equipment, but in 1923, 
uh, this uh, whole incline was scrapped. And uh, for some reason, the, only these two wheel sets are all that's left of the hardware. I was shocked that they even existed and how they sat here all these years since the 20s. The rusting wheel sets still await adventurous hillside explorers, but scant traces remain of the former railway station next to the Greek theater. Meanwhile, at the top of the route, sightseers still flock to Buena Vista Point, where railway passengers once picnic. People visit all the time. They love the view. They, 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 they look around and they see the concrete there and wonder what it's all about. Today, roughly one million tourists visit Catalina each year, but most depart the island unaware of the Incline Railway's history and its role in developing Avalon into a destination resort. And there's very little left of it, too. That big foundation uh, down there is really the whole majority of what's left. The museum has pictures, and, uh, and, 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 but unless you've done that, you probably would never know there was ever a vernacular here. Well, I found the water and I, I lay my burdens down. Well, I left the shore behind me, my soul is heaven bound. Well, my wandering days are over since I lay my burdens down. Well, I am a pilgrim and I, I seek what is Seek what is not there. What you know? What made you come out here? Okay, my mom brought us. Hmm? My mother brought us. Oh well, no. What what <laughs> what made you come out here and explore the Incline Railway? Okay. 